Panda started off as a conversation, really, a group of four friends, professionals, an economist, a doctor, a lawyer, and a little actuary. What we shared was an observation that the data and the facts, the reality of coronavirus was far, far away from what the media and public health institutions were presenting to the world. And we saw in that problem the seeds of a great tragedy. Um, after, after some months, we realized that our South African efforts needed to internationalize. This was not a local story, and it was not only about the science. Our advisory board now includes some of the leading lights in infectious diseases and epidemiology, Nobel laureate, and the working team of Panda now spans the globe and includes a great many scientists, most of whom have to be members of Panda in a cryptic fashion. That's how bad the censorship in this world has become. We have believed from the get-go that it was wrong on a number of levels to close society down and that it has always been time to reopen society. And we also believe that the truth only prevails if plans are taken to bring it to light. Our world is gripped by fear and that fear is very much the part of a false narrative. And anybody who challenges this narrative is a lunatic, a menace, a danger to society. Hence the suppression that Alec was talking about. But it is and always has been absolutely clear to us that no element of this narrative is justified in the face of reality. The reality is that there is a virus. It is having a meaningful impact in some regions of the world. Very few people are susceptible to generating severe disease. There are several available treatments. Asymptomatic people in a more sensible era known otherwise as healthy people are not drivers of the epidemic. Lockdowns and mask mandates have been ruled out by pre-COVID science for good reasons. Never recommended, they've been tried, they have not worked, and they have caused great harm. Instead of protecting the vulnerable minority, we have hurt them. Before COVID, this is repeated. Wherever you look, in any country's pandemic respiratory virus guidelines, lockdowns are ruled out. They don't call them lockdowns because the term didn't exist. They talk about quarantining of the healthy. The measures that are reported to be ineffective and that should never be attempted include large-scale quarantines, border closures, school closures, mask mandates, social distancing, all of the stuff that we're being forced to do. And the effective measures are pretty much limited to isolation of the sick and hand-washing, the stuff we've always done. Again, the literature catches up slowly, and this finding is coming thick and fast. Non-pharmaceutical interventions in general, especially the draconian ones, do not have a statistical impact on epidemic trajectories, whether cases or deaths. And you can even make the discernment that the most draconian interventions are pro-contagion. They actually inflame the spread. Now, we saw this in the data months and months ago, in May last year. It was clear what this chart shows you is that there is no relationship on the, between the stringency of a country's lockdown and the number of deaths per million in that country. That statistically is called a paint splat, and it means there's no relationship. A relationship would look like that. What is very clear in the data is that lockdowns cause a great deal of harm. We have infant mortality. We have creeping poverty. We have starvation, joblessness. There have been gut-wrenching denials of service, failures to diagnose or even treat diseases which are far more impactful 
than coronavirus. And we are now dealing with a horrible specter, especially amongst the youth, of psychological disorders with the incidence of self-harm and suicide, suicidal ideation expanding to levels that have never been seen before. And fear, 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 fear of reinfection, fear of long COVID, fear of resurgences and waves and mutations and variants, and it just is continuous and unnecessary. And it's putting us into a very Orwellian dystopia with pictures that have never been seen in living memory in liberal democracies. Pictures of violence, desperation, and absurdity. Absolute absurdity. If you are not seeing at the moment that the very underpinnings of our civilization are under threat here, then I beg you to consider. We have a choice. We're up. We've been pushed up against the precipice. Are we going to be pushed off or are we going to push back? I'd like you to go and read the Great Barrington Declaration, which advocates pretty much for what the guidelines said, what we knew before the world went mad, that we should pursue a doctrine of focused protection and get on with our lives. Mandela was right. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's okay to have been scared by this virus. Courage is the triumph over fear. And we all need to strive to accomplish it. It's a hell of a task because this is true that men think in herds and go mad in herds, but they only recover their senses one by one. It's a tough task ahead. In order to go back to normal, we need to mount an unprecedented awareness campaign to kill this harmful narrative, this deadly narrative of fear and malarkey. And then after that, we have to do some more work. It's not simply get rid of this fear. We need to look very carefully at what failed, what safeguards do we need to prevent this kind of situation from ever happening again. Thank you.